Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about function notation and equality of functions. Okay, so we talked yesterday about how every relationship between two variables is not a function. Sometimes they're just relations and they're, they're not functions. Functions are really particular ones where each element in the domain is sent to exactly one element in the range. Okay. Um, so since this is the case, we can say that um, the ones, the relations that are functions, we use special notation when we have, have those things. All right, to write an equation in two variables using function notation, we're going to replace the variable y with this right here. And this is read as f of x. Okay, it's always a lowercase f. You have open parentheses and an x inside of it. So it's, that's read as f of x. This does not mean multiplication. So it doesn't mean that you're taking whatever f is and multiplying it um, like f uh, by x. It's not this. That is not what it is, OK? It is a way of saying the value of the function when x is a certain value. So essentially, let's go through what we're talking about here. So this is the way that we saw equations in two variables before. This is the way that we're going to look at them now. So this is f of x is equal to 2x plus 8. Now note, all you are doing is taking this y value and replacing it with this f of x, OK? And so this is a way of saying function uh, with x as a variable. And if I replace x in here, I'm going to say um, we're going to replace x in here. And we're going to show you that in just a second. So this is the notation. Make sure that you um, remember how to read this. This is read as f of x is equal to 2x plus 8. OK, what does this look like in terms of evaluating? So let's say the number of dollars Julio earns while working can be represented by the function f of x is equal to 9x. OK, fill out the table below. So let's choose some values for x here. Okay, so um, I should also include that maybe x is hours. It's a pretty typical. And um, this is going to be in dollars. Okay, now the way that I evaluate for it is I replace x in both sides of the equation. So I say f of 0 is equal to 9 times 0, which is equal to 0. So what this is saying is that f of 0 equals 0. So the long, the understanding is that the function evaluated when x is 0 is also equal to 0. So this is the coordinate 0, 0. Okay. f of 1 is equal to 9 times 1, which is 9. So f of 1 equals 9. So the function evaluated at the x value of 1 is equal to 9, right? So this is it's just replacing your y in terms of input and output. So my coordinate is 1, 9, right? Because the func if the function is equal, so basically you're picking up your x and y coordinates from here. That's your x coordinate right here, right? These are your x coordinates. And your y coordinate is what the function is equal to because that's your, that's your y value. So f of 2, I'm taking f and I'm replacing 2 here. The function evaluated at 2 would be 9 times 2, or 18. So f of 2 is equal to 18. That leads us to the coordinate pair 2, 18. f of 3 is equal to 9 times 3, which is 27. So f of 3 is 27. So 3 comma 27. This is just saying the function evaluated for the x value of 3 is equal to 27. Okay, and that's how you do that. So if I want to keep consistent with my highlights, oops, I could go ahead and highlight these. That's where my x and y values are coming from. Okay, and uh, these are all my y values here. And my x values, um, I put the x in here, and I also replace it here. Okay, and the 9 just comes from the equation up here. Right, that's just, whoops, just do that in a different color here. That's the equation right here. That's just part of it. Okay, whoops, here are my y values. Okay, 
So um, what is the do so this is the when I plot these points, this is what I get: zero, zero, one, nine, two, eighteen, and three, twenty-seven. Um, if I looked at this graph, all right. So this is how the, I sort of skipped over this, but if I'm looking at this function and I want to graph it, the first thing I would do is I'd make a solution table right here, and then I would take the ordered pairs that I just arrived at and I'd plot them, okay? And it ends up that the ordered pairs are all collinear, which means they lie in a straight line, and so I draw the line through it. You've seen graphs like this before in seventh grade. These are proportional relationships because they go through the origin, and the equations are of the form y is equal to kx. For us, we know this to be f of x is equal to k times x where k is the constant of proportionality. Remember, we're making that switch in terms of notation. Okay, um, if I look back at yesterday's lesson, I try to figure out the domain and range. Well, remember, the domain is all the x values. So what were your the x values from the table that we just created? The domain is gonna be equal to the set of zero, one, uh, two, and three. And the range is going to be the set of the values that came out. So 0, 9, 18, and 27. Okay. Now, is that all of uh, the domain? No, it's just the domain that we see um, from the points that we plotted. Okay. Um, because we have two, like, so there's a situation that we could uh, get into, which is that we have two different functions. Now, when we have two different functions, in order to identify one from the other, we usually call one f, but we don't call the second one f. We'll choose another variable, often g. It often, uh, we'll, we'll choose starting from f, like if you have three, you'll have f, g, h, i, j, and so on. Okay, the, probably the most you're gonna see is three, um, but usually you only see two. So we say f, f of x and g of x, okay? Um, so usually when we have two functions, what we're really interested in finding is a solution so when they're both equal to each other. So basically a solution that fits into both of them or a solution for both of them, okay? Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't have them. But what, we, what would be nice to know is that is there an x and y value here that you can satisfy, that you can choose to satisfy both of them? All right. So there's a couple different, we're gonna go over three methods of doing this. Okay, so method number one is taking your two functions and actually just setting the expressions equal to each other. So here we have f of x and g of x, okay? What I'm going to do is take each expression, like this one right here and this one right here, and I'm gonna set them equal to each other, okay? Because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an ordered pair that satisfies both of them. Okay, when I do, so what that means is what is the x value when both of them are equal? If there's any x value, sometimes there's not, okay? So here I can um, add x's to both sides. 4x plus 2 is equal to 10. Subtract 2 from both sides. I'd have 4x is equal to 12 divide by four, divide by four, we'd have x is equal to three. Okay, so, oh, I made a mistake right here where it should have been eight. Uh, so uh, 10 minus two, of course, is not 12, it's eight. Um, and eight divided by four is x is equal to two. Okay, so this is saying that for the x value of two, both of these functions should be equal to each other. Well, let's go ahead and evaluate each function for two. So um, f of 2 up here would be 3 times 2 plus 2, which would be equal to 6 plus 2, which is 8, okay? g of 2 better be the same thing because we're looking for an ordered pair that satisfies both of them. So when I'm substituting in negative x, if x is equal to 2, the negative x, of course, is equal to negative 2. So I'll substitute in negative 2 plus 10, and that indeed is equal to 8. So they're both equal. Um, so that means the ordered pair of 2 comma 8 is the solution uh, for the equality of these. That is the solution for both of these functions. So these functions are equal to each other at 2 comma 8. Okay, method number two is using a table to do that. 
So here we took each function, f of x and g of x. We chose some x values here, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. We put those values in here. So remember, after you write this table down, you want to use annotations to describe exactly what is happening in this table. Because it's not, it's not exactly clear if you're just looking at the table what's happening. So I took 0 and I put 0 in here. I, I evaluated the function so it would be 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 2, which is 2. And I created an order paired 0, 2. I did that for all of these, okay? And then what I noticed is that, um, so when f of, zero, uh, f of 0 is 2, but g of 0 is not 2, it's 10, right? So that's not an ordered pair that's the same. It has the same first coordinate, but the second coordinate is not the same. Like the same thing happens with 1. Uh, f of 1 is 5, but g of 1 is 9. So that, that doesn't work out. Here we get to the, the value here, 2, 8, and 2, comma 8 f of 2 is 8 and g of 2 is 8. So I found the solution, um, uh, the exact solution that satisfies both equations. So this is another way of doing it. It's not the best method, the table method, because who knows? You, you could have tried a million things and the solution may not have popped up. But if it, um, it, it may work at some point, but um, if you run through a bunch of numbers and you're not getting it, then you might want to choose one of the other methods. Okay, so the third method of finding solutions to this um, problem of trying to figure out when these functions are equal to each other is actually by using a graphing technique. So I pulled the solution table over from the previous page. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plot these coordinate pairs. Um, so 0, 2 is going to be um, 0 up 2 like this. 1, 5 will be over 1 and up. Let me go ahead and plot them in blue. Uh, 1, 5 will be here. 2 comma 8 will be here and 3 11 will be over 1 and up right here okay so these are all the um the set of values here that are that are parts of the solutions to these so i'm going to go ahead and um, do this right here and i'm going to put arrowheads on my line so here's the arrowheads on my line Okay, so this is the uh, function f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. So let me actually write that here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and plot the other one. So we have 0, 10. That's the y-intercept here. We have uh, 1, 9, which is right here. We have 2, 8, which is here. And we can see that's the point where it meets. And 3, 7, which is right here. Let me draw a line through these points right here. Always draw the line as long as you can. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put our arrowheads on this line, right? And let's label it uh, g of x is equal to oops, is equal to negative ten plus uh, negative x plus ten. Okay, and so the um, on the graph, the point where the two have the same solution is actually the point where they cross, right? Makes sense because if a line is a set of all the solutions to a function or a two variable equation, then the point where they're equal to each other is the point where they have a they share a point in common, right? So here, this point that they share in common is the point two eight. It's the same point that we arrived at before. So um, there's three different techniques of finding this. One of them is by setting the equations equal to each other. Another one is using a table. And a third one is using a graph and finding out a point where they, are, uh, they have in common because that point is a solution to both equations. The intersection of this line means it's a point on both of the lines. A point on the both the lines means that it is a solution to the equation or to both equations. Okay, and that is the end of the lesson for today.